All right. So, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to lecture 25. Uh, and we are still on the topic of quantum error correction. Uh, last time, I had actually started talking about uh, CSS codes. Uh, so that that is called uh, those are called uh, Calder Bank short steen codes. Uh, but I have decided to pause that discussion because uh, it requires a little bit of mathematical prerequisites, uh, and I don't want to unnecessarily um, subject you to that. Uh, so instead, I'm going to talk about uh, something I think which is perhaps more relevant and more significant, which is the stabilizer formalism. Once again. So we are going to talk about stabilizers. Now, so stabilizer is a very, very general approach to quantum error correction. And what distinguishes it from what we have seen so far is that it is an operator-based approach. Okay. So rather than um, specifying, for instance, in the short nine qubit code, you would specify your logical um, one and logical zero, right? You would you would give the ex explicit basis, explicit expression for the for the code words. What uh, the stabilizer formalism does is it exploits uh, the notion of symmetry. And this was first invented by, discovered by uh, Daniel Watterson, one of those incredibly smart people who do incredible things in their PhD. Um, so let's talk about this. What is this stabilizer approach? You have seen an example of this uh, in uh, what we call it in your quantum error correction workbook, where there is a question which asks you to ask what are the stabilizers, right? So a stabilizer, it's as the name suggests, it is an operator which leaves some state invariant. Right. So stabilizes the state. So as an example, if in the in the three qubit code, right, we ask what is a what is a stabilizer? Uh, or for the nine qubit code, let's say, or uh, no, for for three qubit. First for the three qubit, then for the nine. An example of a stabilizer, right? is something like okay and from now on all such expressions i will write like this okay z1 z2 it is understood tensor products are understood identity is understood okay so if i write something like uh, z1 z3 it's understood that there is an identity acting on the third uh, on the second qubit, okay? So stabilizer state would be something which leaves our code words unchanged, right? So what are our code words in the three qubit case? Okay. So here we can ask something like this. What about Z1, Z2? and Z3. So if it act, acts on the logical zero, it leaves that unchanged, right? But 
its effect on the logical one is that you get a negative minus one phase, right? And that's because you have three qubits in the up state or in the down in the one state, which is the down state. And so Z1, Z2, Z3 gives you, each one gives you an eigenvalue of minus one. So you get a net minus one, right? So this is not a stabilizer. So we can easily see what is a stabilizer. Z1, Z2, right? Z2, Z3, and Z1, Z3. These will all be stabilizers because each one of these will get a, they're obviously stabilizers for the logical zero. In the logical one, you'll get a product of two minus ones, right? So they will be stabilizers for, the, for that state. Now, uh, so what, what do they tell us? What do these operators tell us? They, the eigenvalues of these operators, right? So for instance, if you take Z1, Z2, and you act on some state, which, you know, was the three qubit state, but some, you did some operations or whatever, and you happen to get a minus one. What does this tell you? What information does this give you? This tells you that the first and second qubits, right? Have opposite phase, right? Meaning that if one, if the first qubit is in the up state, then the second qubit is in the down state or vice versa. It doesn't tell you anything about the third qubit, right? But it tells you something about the first and second qubits. So what it is doing is it is measuring the parity, right? So the parity is what? Parity is odd if two bits are this are different and parity is even if two bits are the same, right? So the parity of two bits X and Y is odd or also zero, sorry, minus one, if X is not equal to Y, and even which is corresponds to plus one eigenvalue, X is equal to Y, right? So these are our parity check operators. And this is exactly what we use to correct bit flip errors in the three qubit code, right? So our stabilizers that we need are Z1, Z2, Z2, Z3, Z1, Z3. And which errors do they correct? They correct the bit flip, right? So bit flip is generated by which operator? X operator, right? So they correct X errors, right? Okay, now these, these are the stabilizers for the bit flip, right? Uh, but now what we would like is we would like to have, to, to be able to correct face flip errors also, right? So this is for bit flip. For face flip, what do you think the stabilizers will be? Right? Okay, everybody knows what's going on. X1, um, let me just check the stabilizers. Sorry, I'm making a mistake. Yeah, so the stabilizer will be X1, X2, X2, X. And also one more thing uh, that uh, when I write down these three stabilizer operators, the Zs, you only need two of them. Because measuring the parity between any two pairs of qubits gives you the parity between the remaining third pair. Okay? And the same thing here, x1, x3. 
and this measures which errors the z errors right so there is kind of a duality you can call it or a state you know mirror symmetry maybe okay now uh, of course if you want to do face if you want to do both bit flip and face flip corrections you need to use the nine qubit you can't do it with it right so let's figure out what the what happens in the nine qubit code what are the stabilizers for the nine qubit code right so let me again let me just write down the i'll write it like this okay just to save a little bit of my energy so zero logical zero or logical one right that's what this slash means okay and the plus corresponds to the plus or minus respectively now what are the stabilizer operators for bit flip you will have z1 z2 you will have z2 z3 okay then you will have z4 z5 z5 z6 okay Let me just uh, probably have to restart my screen sharing. Just give me a second. Okay. So we have six stabilizers for the bit flip. Now, what about the face flip? Now. you can take z1 z3 you can take like i said you can take any you can take any two of these right? hmm okay we have uh, like uh, 9c2 9c2 what is 9c2 like combination you have to take two two of them right but 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 bit flips again see these 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 logical qubits right they come in these sets of 3 na right i guess i guess maybe what you're trying to ask is uh what if i have uh, z1 z4 yes well you can write that as a product of these operators so if you have something like z1 z4 um then you would write z1 z2 
Z2, Z3. And no, no, hold. So hold on. Let me, let me, for the time being, let me continue. I'll come to your, your question. Okay. Which is, which is a valid question. Uh, let me see. Uh, Okay, so I'll come back to this in, in, in a little bit. Your question is, is valid, okay? Now, let me, let me try to address, <laughs> address your question. It's like, um, well, okay, so it doesn't make sense to measure Right, so it doesn't make sense to measure uh, Z1 and Z4. Why is that? You tell me, you look at the, these states and you tell me why is that? What will, uh, what will be the effect of an X error on a single one of these qubits? Is there an X error which will cause some correlation to occur between the first qubit and the fourth qubit? An X error, assuming an X error acts on any one of these qubits, what will it do? It will only affect that block. Only the eigenvalue, only the parity of that block will be affected. Example, if you have X1, right? What will X1 do? X1 will act only on the first block, right? And I'll put a, some block, this thing here. Are, are you guys, like, is it cold or something? Should I? Increase the temperature a little bit. Some of you have a illy influenza like illness. No, that's what they're calling it. And sorry, severe acute. Anyway, sorry, don't worry. Bring, bring up such bad idea. You know. So X1 will have no effect on two and three, no? on blocks two and three. It will only have an effect on block one. Right? Yes. Similarly, if you look at any one of the bit flip errors, any one of the bit flip errors will affect only one of the blocks. And there are no, we are not talking about more than one bit flip error. So there is no situation in which you would need to measure the parity between qubits in different blocks. That simply wouldn't make sense. The reason is the following, uh, another way to think of it is the following. The superpositions here are, are restricted to elements within each block, right? So when there's an X error, this block becomes one, zero, 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 one, one, right? Now it makes sense to measure the parity between these two. Right, because the parity ha has been affected in both of these states, right? Or more appropriately speaking, in this in this Hilbert space, right? In this two in this two dimensional Hilbert space. Then there is another two dimensional Hilbert space here, but that is separate. So the errors act on the on these four subspaces on these block subspaces separately. If that was not the case, we would be in trouble. We wouldn't be able to, to you know, come up with, uh, let me just uh, shut down all my apps uh, because uh, my battery is running a little bit. Okay, so does this clarify? I mean, is there, does it clarify this point? This question is asking, does, does my answer satisfy any of you? Any, any of you, one person is satisfied? Okay, good, that's enough. 
moving on now face flip errors how do face flip errors affect our state right once again a face flip error will be restricted to affecting any one of the blocks so face flip error let's say you have z4 z4 will act on block number 2 it will have no effect on blocks number 1 and 3 what will it do it will take this and give you 0 0 0 minus plus 1 1 1 okay so if you apply z4 this error to 0l right your logical 0l what will happen now i will just use a shorthand notation to again reduce my labor i'll write 0l as plus 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 and 1 and less minus 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 okay plus each one of the each one of these corresponds to a single block okay so this plus here corresponds to 0 0 plus 1 1 1 okay i hope it's clear from this notation what's going on minus 1 1 it's clear right now what will happen if if z4 acts on logical 0 what will happen to the plus 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 state it will become a Plus minus plus two, right? So now I want to measure the phase parity, right, between the blocks, between the respective blocks, not between the individual qubits, but between the respective blocks. So I want to measure this parity. Similarly, if you have Z seven, or let's say Z eight, it doesn't matter. Zero L. your state will become plus plus minus so now i need to measure again i can choose which group of blocks to measure i can choose to measure the parity between blocks 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 or 1 and 3 and okay you understand so this will become plus plus minus oops one second minus and then i have to measure the parity between between these two okay so i need stabilizer operators right so which correspond to this parity now the errors are being caused by z and just guesswork would suggest that our parity operators would have something to do with the axes so what is the action of X one, X two, X three. Let's ask ourselves: What is the what? Are, what are the stabilizers other than the Zs? Right? We still have to complete the list of stabilizers. Right? What would something like X one, X two, and X three do? You would get uh, you would get a minus plus plus. Right? Because X one would change the phase. from so you from your plus state you would go to minus state x2 would again change the phase so you would go from plus minus state to the plus state right? you have three operations so you you would say that well this is a this is a stabilizer because it doesn't change this state okay but then this state this operator doesn't give us any information about what is happening in the other two blocks right we have to measure this parity between the other two blocks to uh, know if there is any phase error right so i need this combination of x1s and x2s which acts on two blocks at a time something like this right so what does this do this acts on block 1 and block 2 and similarly i can have another set which acts on block 2 and block 3 and 
we can check that these are indeed stabilizers. What does X1, X2, X3 do to the first block? Which I'll write like this, block one. It will give you, uh, sorry, so, uh, yeah, okay. It will flip the block. So I'll write that with the I bar. One, so, <laughs> I'm taking too many notational. Uh, so this by one, I mean like the first block. Okay, so it can be zero, zero, zero plus minus one in the first block. And then this bar means that I just flip the phase. I get plus minus one in the first block. Right? So I can write my uh, zero L. Uh, so and then what will x4, x5, x6 do on the, on the second block? Sorry, 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 sorry. My mind, my mind. <laughs> this will give me a minus i. Give me a minus, minus, uh, okay. So, so <laughs> let's just remind ourselves. Wait, wait a minute, okay. What is the eigenvalue of the X operator acting on this state? It's plus or minus one, right? So X1, X2 and X3, right? Or some combination like this. So let's just take X1 and X2 for now, right? Right, what will it do? You will again get plus or minus. Okay. Now, consider something like this, X1, X2, and X4, X5, okay? X1, X4 acting on the first block will give you plus or minus eigenvalue if the first block is plus or minus. Again, let me make sure I'm getting my. And then X4, X5 acting on the second block will also give you plus or minus. If those two state, if that second block, right, is in the plus minus state. But imagine now that there has been a phase flip on the second block. If there's a phase flip in the second block, so I'll write it like this. This is the second block state with a phase flip, that bar, that notation that I introduced. What will happen? You will get a net negative, right? So an operator of this form will measure the parity, relative parity in the phase between the two blocks. Okay. Um, and so the actual set of operators that you need to do that is all three of them acting on one and two and then acting on two and three. Why all three of them? Because your phase flip could happen on any one of the three qubits. No? The each block has how many qubits? Three qubits. Your phase error could happen in any one of the three qubits in any one of the three blocks. Right? So if I have an operator of this form, right, it is measuring the relative parity between the first block and the phase parity between the first and second blocks. Right? But it ignores what if there is some error. Due, due to the third qubit and the sixth qubit respectively. You understand? So if I have X1, X2, X3, and I act on I, right? What will I get? I'll get minus I. So this is not a stabilizer for 
one block. But if I take x1, x2, x3, and x4, x5, x6, and act on my full state, what will I get? I'll get one minus one from the first one, minus one from the second one, right? Assuming that there has been no error, okay? What will I get? I'll get a plus one. But if I have a phase error in one of the qubits in the second block, so now what happens is my second block has gone from plus to minus. So I put a bar over here, right? This denotes the fact that this is the positive state, this is the negative state. And this is a minus, should be a minus sign. Right? So there's been an error. So what will happen? I will get a minus one and that's it. Right? Because x4, x5, x6 acting on the second block will give me plus, plus one. It won't give me minus one. X1, X2, X3 acting on the first block will give you minus one. You can convince yourself that this is the case, okay? What is the eigenvalue of this acting on zero, zero, zero? What is this? This is uh, no, sorry, no. X1, X2, X3, uh, 0, 0, 0. Yeah, it will give you plus or minus. So these are your stabilizer. Op this is your set of stabilizers. You have the Zs. How many of them? You have six of them. And you have the phase errors, which measure the relative parity between the blocks of qubits. What is important to understand is that, again, in this case, one might ask, um, why am I not measuring the phase parity, right? This plus minus sign between two qubits in the same block, right? You could ask, why am I not? So I have my, and this is my first block. You could ask, well, why am I not measuring the phase parity with this operator acting on X2 and X3, right? Why would you not need to do that? Because again, we are working with the assumption of what? Single qubit errors. A single qubit error will only change this overall sign from plus to minus. Right? So a single, again, so these are my two states, okay? Plus, 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 which is zero L and one L, which is plus, uh, minus, 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 okay? A phase error on any one qubit will can give me what possible states? Plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, Minus plus plus, minus minus plus, minus plus minus, and plus minus minus. These are my possible errors now. Single phase flip error. So to correct these errors, what do I need to do? I need to measure two sets of parities. Which parities do I need to measure? I need to measure the parity between my first and second blocks and between the second and third block. So for instance, if I measure the parity between, in this case, if I measure the parity between, so if my error, okay, is caused by uh, Z, Z3, right? I will get plus, plus, minus. No, no, sorry, not, not Z3. Any one of the Z789, anything, any one of them acting on this 
will give me plus plus minus. Because minus is in the third block, third block means seven, eight, nine. How do I correct this? I measure this parity and I measure this parity. Right? This parity gives me plus one, this parity gives me minus one. What does that tell me? That tells me my third qubit is my, my third block has a phase error. Yeah, but now working at the block level and in the, uh, this thing, the Hadamard basis or the phase basis, if you want to call it, okay? So I've taken a little bit of time to go over this again and again to convince you that there are, that this is how phase errors act and they act on a block level. So let me, now what we can do is we can write down we can arrange all our stabilizers in a very nice pattern as follows. So there are now eight stabilizers, okay? And uh, this is the first stabilizer, right? So this is your qubit index, let's say. One qubit, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you have nine qubits, right? Your second set of stabilizers uh, is on two and three. I'll just put a cross mark here. That's easier to write. Okay, no, not a cross mark because that looks like an X. I'll just put one. Okay, one. All the others are ones. Then my second pair of Z stabilizers is in four and five. Everything else is one. Right? And then on five and six, everything else is one. Okay. And actually, let me just show you this because it's easier to show than to, than to draw. So the matrix looks like this. Okay. You can see that this is a, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an eight by eight matrix. There are eight stabilizers and there are eight, uh, sorry, this is a nine by eight matrix, my bad, nine by eight, because there are nine qubits. But you can see there's a nice pattern here, right? Z, 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 Z acting on the second block, second block. And then here, oops, your X is, so this is acting on the first two blocks and this is acting on the second two blocks. Okay. So these are the stabilizers. Now let me ex ex uh, go over the general, general theory of this. And before mentioning that, let me also make another point, which is that uh, we have been talking about phase and bit flip, but what if there is a continuous error, right? We haven't, we haven't talked about the, about the possibility that there might be a continuous error. That means you could have something like this, something like, which gives you a phase e to the i theta, which is not necessarily plus or minus one. Because you can have that. How do you correct this error? Do you need another set of operators? It turns out you don't, okay? The reason for this is the following, that any error, and I'll just write down for a single qubit error, any single qubit error, can be expanded in the following way. So I'm writing this error as an operator. This is an operator. And here I'm using this, this state operator correspondence. You remember that, that any state can be, uh, 
So, uh, yeah, okay. So I, no, I don't need that. I just write like this, alpha, beta, x, gamma, y, and delta z, where x is the poly x, z is the delta, uh, poly z, right? Why is this? Because any error can be th thought of as an operator, which is a two, uh, acting on a single qubit, that's a two by two matrix. And any two by two matrix can be decomposed, can be written as a linear combination of the, these basis matrices, one, X, Y, and Z. And what if, moreover, Y can be written as uh, I times X, Z. So if you correct X and if you correct Z, this is obviously no error. If you correct X and if you correct Z, you automatically correct Y and you, you, can, you automatically correct any linear combination because of the linearity of quantum mechanics. And there's a bit, of, bit more to this, uh, but I'm not gonna go over that, okay? So, but, but the fact is, the point is that this is a very beautiful fact of aspect of quantum mechanics that uh, correcting a discrete set of errors is sufficient for correcting all continuous errors. Yes? So like for the continuous error, delta needs to be less than one, right? Like all the corrections which you did till now will be less than one. So here, okay, so this is, this is some two by two matrix, okay? Alpha, beta, A, B, C, D. You can write any two by two Hermitian matrix as a linear sum of this one. And this is an error, so the error itself has to correspond to some Hermitian operator. So it doesn't say anything about the values of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, okay? For instance, I have a bit flip error. For a bit flip error, what is what are the values of these coefficients? Alpha, gamma, delta is what? Zero. Beta is one. Okay. This is bit flip. Similarly, phase flip will be alpha, beta, gamma is equal to zero, delta is equal to one. But the point is that you could have a, have a linear combination of phase flip and bit flip. Right? In which case beta and delta would be. And again, what you're asking is that, is there some restriction on these coefficients? Yeah, I mean, you would have. Right? They would all have to, the sum of this would, would have to add up to one. Okay, but I haven't, I haven't mentioned this in more detail because I, you know, this, this involves understanding, viewing this, viewing a, a matrix as a vector. And maybe some of you can get that, but I don't want to unnecessarily test your limits, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the general theory of, once again, general theory of stabilizer, yes. So, so what you're saying is that like right now we were applying just individual case, right? Z1, Z2, and Z1. So through this Hermitian matrix, we were able to apply the entire uh, uh, beta x plus gamma y plus delta z. We're the talking about yeah, exactly. You can have linear combinations of errors, huh? rather than just having a bit flip or a face flip. You can have a linear combination. Remember the block sphere picture. This is a block sphere, right? These are your plus one and zero and one states. Now, a bit flip error means that your vector goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. A phase flip error means that your vector goes from East to West, let's say, right? From the plus state to the minus state. But you can have, you have all these other points on the, on the sphere also, no? What if my vector goes here? Isn't that an error? That's an error, no? 
or if my vector stays in the xy plane but it rotates a little bit that's also an error how would i express this this is a going to be a linear combination of 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 two transformations right two or three transformations okay all right so let me talk about the only reason i'm a little bit concerned is because my laptop battery is running real low and uh, um, i've closed all the apps that i can think of i'll reduce the brightness also okay so now uh, the uh, stabilizer formalism uh, has the uh, the following properties first of all we work with what is called the poly algebra or the the group of poly matrices and let me just i need to introduce uh, insert a few more of these things in front of okay so the poly algebra is as follows or the this is the poly group sorry this is a poly group the poly group on n qubits okay it consists of all the operators of the form uh u1 u2 till un where any of the uis are one of the following operators i x y z and also imaginary i imaginary y imaginary i okay so for instance you can see that these operators are all right of this form and such a such these operators they form a group this is more what is more important so if you take any any product of these operators so for instance if i take x1 x2 x3 right or x1 x2 z3 let's say and multiply it by y2 x3 right i will get another element of the poly group okay so in this case what will i get i will get x1 right and then i have x2 and y2 that will give me some multiple of z right so i'll get z2 z3 and x3 will give me some multiple of y3 right there'll be some fact factors of you could have a factor of i that appears which is why i need these these guys also right without them it's not a group right so so the, these are, this forms a forms a proper group okay and what are the how many elements are there in the group how many elements are there you have four uh, sorry six operators and n qubits so i think it will be six to the n okay size of the poly group right 7 to the n okay of course we don't need all of those operators but we need some we need to know some properties of these operators and my battery is almost literally dead and i don't know what to do um so the stabilizers are the stabilizer subgroup okay it's a subgroup of the poly group of the poly group on n qubits such that each one of the elements of this stabilizer group leaves your code word unchanged so if you have a member of this stabilizer group 
it leaves your code word unchanged whatever your code word is okay and um so now imagine that there is an error okay and let's say this error i will tell you why let's say that this error anti commutes with m what is anti commute mean anti commute means m e plus e m this bracket is 1 okay is 0 sorry that is what it means anti commutes then what is the effect of the this m stabilizer acting on this on this error state right on this corrupted state well because of the anti commutation i can write this as minus e m psi right and m psi is equal to psi so this becomes minus e psi so this tells me that the state e psi is an eigen state of my stabilizer with eigen value minus 1 okay so what do i do i have my uh my qubits i measure my stabilizers if my stabilizers give me eigen value minus 1 and remember i can do all of this without causing the state to collapse right i showed you in one of the previous lectures how to act or measure the eigen value of any operator any unitary operator whose eigen value is plus or minus 1 without collapsing the state right so this set of errors which anti commute with this elements of the stabilizers can be corrected by measuring the eigen value of the stabilizer okay now so uh what else these elements of the stabilizer group for all m1 m2 in the stabilizer group they commute with each other okay this has to be the case because given a code word both of these operators leave that code word unchanged right so if i act as m1 m2 if i act like this this should give me the same result as acting on the state with m1 and m2 which tells me that m1 and m2 they have to commute so this tells me that this that this subgroup this stabilizer subgroup is abelian so all of the operators that i have shown you above the zs and the xs you can check that they all commute with each other it doesn't look like it's trivial because you have zs and xs and you might think that they give you products will give you some ys uh, but it will work okay so we can define a set of states so now here's the, here's how the the stabilizer code works you take your poly group you consider the abelian subgroup of this poly group you define states which are stabilized by that abelian subgroup those states form a code they form a code right so this this is a constructive procedure for building new quantum error correcting codes right and you can do this for any number of of qubits right but of course a given poly group may have more than one abelian sub right and they can be of different sizes that will give you different different types of quantum codes as an example uh we'll talk about it in the next class is something called the uh hamming code and there is something called a uh steen code so the hamming code uh corrects uh one error using seven qubits right 
And why is that possible? It's possible because the the poly subgroup. Okay. Well, we'll 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 talk about it in the next. Place. And then the Steen code does something else. It it it, it corrects. Um, it's like a seven four code. Anyway, once you understand the stabilizer formalism, we will come back <laughs> to the CSS codes, and the CSS codes will then make much more sense. So my Mac will sleep soon unless plugged into a power outlet, and this brings me to the end of the class. So I have given you a preliminary introduction to stabilizer codes. Okay, this is not the whole story. That will require one more lecture. All right. For those who are interested in reading about this, you can. I will share the PDF. Uh, it's a review paper by by Gottesman, who discovered these codes. I don't like like the expression "invented," because I don't believe that we we invent anything. Um, the best we can do is we, we we discover some you know some fact of nature that already exists. Okay. All right. Then.